Pokemon has always been a franchise that embraces the spooky vibes when appropriate, but there isn't really a specific Pokemon game to play during this time of year. But while just about every Pokemon game has individual areas with darker colors and that house ghost-type Pokemon, they're more of a standard thing. So if I were to recommend one game in the series that best captures the feeling of October, it would be Pokemon X and Y. These games did originally come out in October back in 2013, very spooky already. For one thing, these were the first Pokemon games to use Europe as an influence for their setting. Not saying anything bad about the entire continent, but this is where modern fairy tales and even ghost stories originated from. Along with the introduction of E-Fairy-type, there were also some great additions to ghost-type Pokemon in this generation. The Aegislash line is unforgettable, another object Pokemon, it takes the form of a ghostly sword through various unique stages. Perhaps it was a bit too good with how powerful the final evolution originally was, but it still did a great job at being a brand new Pokemon that fit the region perfectly. We also have the duo of Punkaboo and Fanta. Both being partially grass-type, they're able to stand out from each other in how they approach this idea. Pumpkaboo goes with a jack-o'-lantern inspiration that seems too perfect for a Pokemon concept, but they even went the extra mile of incorporating size differences. While Phantom looks a lot more sad with how it becomes a ghost of the forest, and if you're able to trade them, their evolutions are so worth it. Again, taking very different paths, but both delivering something brand new to the world of Pokemon that are still loved to this day. And the routes in which you find these two Pokemon have a perfect look. Now you can experience a little bit of everything in the Kalos region much like any other Pokemon game, but so far none of them have given us routes that look like they were taken right out of the middle of autumn. The warm colors in the grass and leaves help it stand out, but the truth is there are quite a few sections that maintain this look. Routes 15 and 16, as well as Lavera City, a literal fairy tale town. Really, it all works together with the progression of the whole region. You basically start off with Spring and Vanaville Town, moving into Summer once you reach the coast, and then rounding toward Denimil Town, you're in Fall until finally reaching Winter of Snowbell City. But with the vibrant colors of Pokemon's very first 3D main series game, the fall themed routes really stick with you. And let's not forget the lead up through the dark, swampy forest that ends with the Scary House. This is one of my favorite little moments in any Pokemon game where we get to hear a ghost story and even though it basically amounts to a tourist distraction where there aren't any real ghosts, it still fits the theme. If anything, it shows how acutely aware the residents of Kalos are when it comes to creepy things. Because we as a player who gets to travel around know that there are in fact actual ghosts hanging around right under everybody's noses with the Ghost Girl of Lumio City. An absolute icon when it comes to Pokemon mysteries, and while we don't know who the one is, maybe someday we'll get to find out. Oh, also we can't forget that Generation 6 brought back the Hex Maniac and contributed to her becoming one of the most, um, well-known trainer classes for better and for worse. But while it may seem like X and Y don't have an actual haunted location, I feel like the Lost Hotel is pretty underrated. An old abandoned building, it serves as a hangout for delinquents and also a few ghost Pokemon. The brand new ones we got in this generation prefer to hang out elsewhere, and there are some other Pokemon that usually make their homes in abandoned urban areas, but when it comes to previously known ghosts like Litwick and Rotom, this is actually a perfect place for them to live in the Collis region. It's actually a really cool idea to start incorporating Rotom into these types of places because it is a ghost and electric Pokemon, so obviously it would be drawn here. And then of course our Mega Evolutions for some of the other previously known ghost Pokemon, I really think it was here where Gengar started getting more of a mascot status, with all of the merchandise and additional material that it received. Though I am a really big fan of what they did with Mega Bayonet in this game, it, it looks so crazy. But interestingly enough, Kalos is the one region where there isn't a ghost-type specialist. I guess my point is that when looked at as a whole, the spooky details of Pokemon X and Y give it an edge above other Pokemon games when it comes to those Halloween vibes. But a Pokemon generation isn't only a video game, it's really made by all the additional material that builds upon those ideas and themes that were first established in the Nintendo consoles. Little things like how Mega Gengar was later pushed with shiny distributions and then was even the face of the Phantom Forces TCG set. It definitely had some of the biggest impact competitively, but I think it would have also been neat to see it build some kind of lore. There is a nice little detail of all these colorful swirls that appear in the artwork of various psychic Pokemon, and they seemingly have their origin in the stadium card Dimension Valley. I guess it was sort of meant to be like how the Lost Zone is utilized and portrayed whenever it makes an appearance in the training card game, but it didn't really have the same impact. I appreciate the effort though. Also, this is where we got the Night March deck, and that was a very powerful strategy that also featured some cute little creepy crawlies with a Halloween theme. If you're into playing retro formats or expanded formats, then Night March is definitely the deck to play around this time of year. And if you're a long-time viewer, you'll also know that the vibes continue to be immaculate with these special websites Pokemon would produce for their Japanese fans. I bring up the Pokemon Horror Spot every chance I get, and of course there are several videos where I go into the general theme or individual Pokemon, so I won't necessarily do like a whole breakdown here. The art pieces created by Hitoshi Ariga for this website remain some of my favorites. 
As you would also expect, the X and Y anime had quite a few episodes that lean into the spooky feeling and some that were basically just lighthearted Halloween celebrations without actually using the name. I'll probably do some individual reviews of those episodes if you want me to, so leave a comment. The real point I'm making is that if you want to spend this month absorbing Halloween vibes in a Pokemon way, I would highly recommend replaying Pokemon X and Y, busting out your collection of Phantom Forces cards, or getting a hold of sealed product if you're that lucky, taking a scroll through the Pokemon Horror Spot website, and watching some of those spooky X and Y anime episodes. Oh, and of course I recommend watching past Halloween videos made by this one guy called Gatorx. I just think that Pokemon X and Y held up pretty well and were the games that I would outright call the spookiest. Not the scariest, but the games that really did deserve to be released in October. With the lore that builds throughout the game, it really has this overall sense of maybe not necessarily dread, but it's definitely one of the sadder stories in Pokemon, even though it really has a good and uplifting ending. But that sense of dread really does carry throughout a good portion of the game, and all the other little spooky ghost-type Pokemon and other things that we get in the course of the story really just make it stand out for this time of year. I know I'm honestly like a year late to this kind of topic because I think most people replay them during the 10th anniversary last year, but this time around we have Pokemon Legends EA to look forward to as well. I'm really interested to see how well they uphold the overall feeling of the originals. So let me know what you think in the comments below and what are some of your favorite memories of these games. Personally, a lot of my more recent Halloween memories are directly related to my YouTube channel, but I'm also very nostalgic for the time I got my shiny Gengar from GameStop and also picked up some Gengar-themed booster packs. I, I no longer have the video that I opened those in and I really wish I did, but at least it still lives on in my memory. Anyway, thanks for getting ready for Halloween with me and I'll see you in even more videos throughout the rest of the month. Thank you to every channel member for your continued support, including the great Gators. Alex with Shiny Hunter, Tyler Hopper, Jake Brody, GigaWiiU64, Isabella Lawrence, Alive R360, Nani, The Shoeman, Copybot, Master, Chaotic Sasano, Zero Two, Lockadox, Koi Koi 13, Cemetery Hill, Pastel Blood, Cosmo Zero, Rainfrux, Cheez It 62, Gator Kid 509, TF, Mathaclock 947, Taijirai, Justin R, Phantom, and Quago. If you would like to support, see your name here, get access to emotes for comments, live streams, and sometimes early videos, you can become a channel member today. You can also follow me on Twitter as well for more memes. Anyway, this is Gatorx, and I'll catch you all later. Peer into the haunted void and unleash the powers of Mega Evolution. Pokemon trading card game XY Phantom Fortunes in stores now. Each booster pack of 10 cards sold separately. Cards vary by pack.